everyone ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the high rollers and this is a special one because it's not just me it's not just rc we have a friend the right factor aaron himself what up what up what up <laughs> wait i gotta welcome i gotta in. crack you guys had your little your, your lighter <laughs> flick I, I i wonder if you'll be able to hear this beer i don't know if we heard it <laughs> well no. maybe i'm too high because i didn't hear the beer and i didn't hear the lighter flick either it, you know <laughs> i didn't hear the lighter flick either but the, the well, I, i'm not, the I'm not gonna beer. lie like i'm not gonna lie multiple episodes now i just don't hear the lighter flick and i'm like am i too high or what's going on so i'm pretty well, sure discord like I it made it to where stuff like that doesn't go through, but I I see it on on the record. So like, oh okay. I was tripping for a second. I'm like, wait, was the lighter flicking? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, I just cracked a beer because I can't indulge in the the fun stuff. I didn't get a chance to get to anywhere to get in. So, <laughs> beer it is tonight. Oh, so what are exactly are you drinking? Ooh. To to be honest. Are, are you sure you're ready for this? Yes. It's just, it's just a beer that is a pineapple flavored cider beer Ooh. from cider from Cider Bros, which is a northeast staple up in the Vermont area. Oh, that sounds okay. really good. Yeah, that sounds that. tasty. It is. It is unequivocally bussin. So, <laughs> what's the percent on that? Uh. Let me see. I poured it into a glass, so I'm gonna have to go outside and get another oh. one. It's in the trash can at the bottom of the trash can now. Oh. So you can guess uh, me by the by the time you you finish it, probably probably like five or six. Probably, I would say pretty close. That sounds um, right up my alley. I love good cider. I'm trying to find it. It's gonna take me a minute, but I'll have an answer in a second. With Aaron being here, obviously we like oh, to introduce five percent. Five percent. Five percent. Yeah, that's a nice for us. That's a nice chill one beer. We're playing pinball. It's <laughs> relaxing. Shout out to Mustang Sally Brewing Company. Yes, <laughs> that's the spot. But otherwise, I just um, I just had what is this? Forbidden Runs. I have some of this on me right now. It's a nice blend. I don't know what RC RC came Ooh. back with some Cali. I'll let you know. Yeah. But I don't know what you got from your boy who's has the weirdest terminology when it comes to scaling his weed. But <laughs> um yeah, what it, you know what train uh, that is? I'm assuming you uh, had that and not the Cali unless you did smoke some of that. I did I did smoke some of the Cali tonight. Right, so so you got some of that strawberry burr. Yes. The strawberry shortcake. The strawberry shortcake. Uh, I feel like I want to ask questions about how you managed to get it to where you are. I didn't know <laughs> that that was possible. Oh, so the DMV area is all officially legal now. Yeah. So, oh. Yeah, so D.C. was first, and then we're, we're, I am Virginia, I think 2019 or 2020 around there. That's when I got yeah. legal there. And now Maryland, just this year, they just passed. So wow, yeah, and All they're right. all smushed together. So if you lived in yeah. Maryland, you could just go to D.C. or Virginia, and vice versa. And... Exactly. Well, alrighty then. That that answers that question. Yep. That's how. Dang. All right. <laughs> the high rollers roll, I guess. Uh... <laughs> I I would say so. <laughs> but otherwise, getting uh, all the formalities out of the way, Aaron. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, for real. Thank you for spending the take your time out of your night to come chat coasters and recap the stumble that you also attended. Uh, yes, so yes, I did. I I appreciate the opportunity to come on and sit and be able to you know bullshit with you guys for a little bit. <laughs> and, uh, Glad to have makes you for on. a good night. So, yeah. So I guess let's start with just a general question: How exactly did you get into the hobby? Now exactly you're here now. You know, you went to the stumble and got 100, all that stuff, so. Yeah. Well, 
let's start with why I became a coaster enthusiast. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, it was a complete accident. Um, I so I'm from Florida. If uh, you guys didn't know, that's my home area, is Central Florida. So I grew up around you know Disney, Universal, Busch Gardens, Sea World. Um, my dad actually retired from Disney World uh, 30 years. So oh, like I lived wow. I lived close enough that like I, it was so it wasn't like I had to like prepare to go. I just woke up and was able to go, which yeah, is right. a non occurrence anymore. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, I'm talking to you, Disney. <clears throat> um, no, Disney somehow always gets in the cast. You saw the news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, but so. I grew up, you know, theme parking, but not really having seasons. So I kind of took it for granted. Whereas a lot of people who uh, live in other places are, are only get theme parks and roller coasters, you know, for parts of the year. Um, but I didn't really think of it like that. <laughs> and one, uh, I can't remember exactly what caused it, but what the first coaster that I rode that really like stood out to me uh, and I, I still love it dearly to this day, uh, is Shikra. Uh, I rode it before it was floorless, uh, before they, it was right before they did the floorless transition. So it was still really a new ride. Um, but then in the last probably year, um, probably a little over a year ago, my wife was like, we've been riding a lot of roller coasters. And I was like, yeah, I, and love it and she was like you should we, we should like ride every roller coaster in the country mm -hmm. and i was like oh. do you know how big of a goal that is and she's like oh it can't <laughs> be that big like and that, mind you this is like we we had went to i think we went to six flags over georgia for like a birthday for my birthday or something like we just went like just uh offhand right. and she was like you know we could totally ride every roller coaster in the country and i started doing research and that's kind of what got me into realizing like how big of a community it is and like how big of a network of roller coasters there are yep and i was like babe i'm i hate to tell you but it would take us probably forever to ride every roller coaster that's out there. Like, and I mean, excluding like fair coasters, you know, cause I don't really, yeah. I, I, I try to count coasters. I, I think everybody can have their own way of counting their credits. You know, there's a lot of ideologies. Um, let's just say, right. <laughs> yeah. I, I personally, I, I don't want to count like, you know, movable coasters that like, pick up and move from fair to fair or you I know think I, do, I have one that i count that's just like that and, and as as you know that's that's part of what i love about the the what we do and what we love is i don't look at somebody and be like well that's not a coaster if it is a coaster and you think it's a coaster hey that you know more power to you that's all to me i think the movable coasters are coasters but to me i can't ever tell if it's one i've ridden before if it's somewhere with the same company or yeah. moving around uh and and you know we we have coasters that come to like the strawberry festival festival in florida and uh i i just i can't, i don't count those but i i'm sure my credit would be much higher if i did <laughs> um, but I started realizing how big the coaster community was and it kind of just drug me in on like from there because now I'm a very big uh, learner. I like to like learn things about, I'm a, I'm a fact person. If you ask me, sometimes I'll just give you random facts that make no sense. Uh, and it'd be like, why do you know that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's just kind of how it came with coasters. And now I, I love them. And now it's, my my wife probably regrets ever saying, "Hey, we should ride every coaster in the country." Because now I'm like, you know, I want to do it. So, <laughs> um, she gets a little. She's glad I'm in a club, uh, like in a coaster club now too, because now I have people I can talk to about it. It's not just her. So, <laughs> uh, I told her I was on a pod, the podcast tonight. Right? She like before she left work, and she was like. She's like, oh, yeah, I remember because she remembers RC when we had talked about it uh, in line for X2. Yeah. Uh, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's tonight. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, wait, aren't you supposed to go get uh, some some ganja? 
And I'm like, <laughs> I was, but we just, time didn't work out. So I was like, I'll just have a couple drinks and call it a day. Um, but she's like, I'm so glad you're doing that because now I don't have to hear about coasters for till your next trip. So you can spill it all um, out now, but then it's gonna right, basically, it's gonna come back probably in a day or two. And you're probably yeah, in Discord. Yeah, and, something uh... else will happen. And uh, I've already, uh, I've already allowed notifications to start coming through for uh, stumbles of fun. So we'll see yes. how that all plans out for the next one. I think. I think. That actually may be one of my. I, I really want to do that. Same, because we were talking. That's yeah. a really decent Midwest. So West, you should group up with me and Daniel, because Daniel's very interested. Shout out Pac Man. Yeah, man took some fire photos. He got he got a, a yeah. banger of a photo of me, my wife, Jike, and Chris on Hang Time. I saw that one, and that was incredible. I got, I was, wow. for the ERT at Wonder Woman, I was sitting front row and I saw Daniel out there taking pictures and I waved him down. So I think he got some shots that he's going to send me. Yeah, he, oh, um, yeah, got a good one. New profile what's pick. funny, RC, is we were talking, uh, before the pod and I told, I told Wes that I was going to bring this up. So I actually, so what's funny is we had obviously talked at the X2 ERT when you were guys were in that back row and we were yeah. sitting, me and my wife right there. What's funny is I forgot that you had lunch with us at Knott's. Like I didn't put two and two together. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, I don't know where that happened. Like when that happened, but like I think... then I started to realize it and I was like, Oh yeah, totally. I remember it now. But like at that moment I was like, I didn't, didn't even put two and two together. I think it's cause I didn't mention the West connection at lunch. That's probably Yeah. Why. You brought it up. At, you brought it up at the, the ERT and I was like, yeah. Oh, okay. That makes total sense now. But I did not put it together when we were all sitting at lunch together yeah. for some reason of all the things. Which I don't know how your feelings are about that Notch Chicken place, but I thought it was good. It was, it was really good. I'd say. Yeah. I'm sure there's better places out there. Oh yeah, it was, I'm like, sure. Really good for being right in front of Knots. And theme park that. food generally is a fail, but yeah. that was that was good. That and that boysenberry jam. Mm. Whew. I bought some. I, I was brought not it able to get boysenberry beer at Knott's, unfortunately. What? Uh, they were out, so I got a stout a couple times. I got a couple bro, of stouts. I had it. I had it at lunch. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get it at lunch. I tried to get it from the yeah. place in the park. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had it at lunch, and you. It's a must-have when you go back. <clears throat> it's a must-have. Definitely. Hundred percent. Uh so. I guess you were saying your thing about stumbles of fun yourself. What exactly? I guess do you have anything outside of coasters you would love as much as them, or like? Uh, so have I, as much of a passion. I mean, I love a lot of things. I, <laughs> I I'm coasters are probably my fixation when it comes to things. Like I, I always end up. Uh, I mean, I, I don't go a day without thinking about or seeing something that deals with roller coasters. Now, I've kind of driven most of my social medias that way. So, like, anytime I open Twitter, it's something about coasters. Same. Um, but on the flip side, I am an avid motorcycle enthusiast. I love Ooh. motorcycles. Um, I my, my wife and I almost rented a bike for the – Monday that we were there after the stumble, we were thinking about renting a bike so we could go drive Maholland on a bike, but it just wasn't feasible in time and the cost. But we, I, I've ridden motorcycles since I was, you know, a teenager basically. That's awesome. Um, and so bikes are like my, that's something I like to do on the side of, you know, like explore, exploring the world. I, I love going out on a bike and disappearing for a couple hours. It's a good way to, you know, clear your mind when you're, when you're having one of those days that you just don't want to talk to anybody. And then it's also a great way to have a date. You know, I get on a motorcycle and go with my wife and end up wherever we end up. We right. find some awesome restaurants, restaurants that way. 
Um, right. But other than that, I pretty much uh, I, I love my dogs. I love, you know, just normal things, really. I don't really have a whole lot that I'm like attached to. I'm not a, like I like playing video games and I'll sit down and I'll kill a couple hours here and there. But it's not like uh, where I, I, I would miss playing video games, you know. So, yeah, I guess coasters and motorcycles is about all I have in that like really like attaches me. And That's then dope. making videos, obviously, which is how you guys have seen some of the stuff I make. I mean, I make videos. It's not like my favorite thing in the world, but I, I do enjoy it. It's peaceful. Shout out to his channel. Go and subscribe to The Ride Factor because underrated content. I do appreciate that. And I appreciate that tag on you on the Instagram the other yes. day. That was uh, much appreciated. There is so many, like, so many small, like channels that are just that have such good content that i'll just be searching i'll, I'll literally just be like after my day <laughs> be like, oh, hit the bomb i'm like oh youtube and then Chill. i'll just search for like you know what i, I don't want el Toro ryan's great you know we, we all know he's great we all we you know we all know every time he's 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 a casual you know he's he's your go-to but what's new right what, what who is trying who's trying to get and be that new person yeah <laughs> What's new out there? And then it's like, to yours feels fresh. I don't know. It's because like, you also bring your wife along. <laughs> and I love seeing new experiences, too. It's reliving. <laughs> the, uh, reliving she, uh, to, to much of her demise, uh, she, uh, she really, uh, she is not. A, uh, so I have social anxiety myself, and I was very nervous going off mm -hmm. of the stumble. Um, but my wife, man, recording in public around her, I mean, there could be nobody in the park. It would just be, it could be literally a solo park trip. Just her and I and nobody else in the park and she would still be nervous uh, of it. me filming in public. And so like, I, especially on this trip, you're going to notice the videos are a little different because of how I'm doing them because I, I want to enjoy my time when I'm at the park, but mm -hmm. I also want my wife to enjoy herself and not feel like she has to be on edge. There was supposed to be more to this segment, but... My internet randomly cut out throughout my whole house. So we're moving on to another part where you're going to hear a conversation just begin. Where they're talking about us uh, seeing each other in passing throughout the parks throughout the days at Straight Out of Stump Booth. Like, I uh. saw you in passing a bunch. But, like, yeah, there was never a chance just to, like, sit down and, like, chat. A bunch, yeah. so like, which I'm kind of glad. Like, no, but I'm kind of glad we didn't because it makes like, it makes the podcast going to be a little bit better because we both That's are true. seeing it from different points. That's true, you know. So like, I would have loved to sit down and chat, but I'm glad that we didn't expel all of our <laughs> opinions yeah, exactly. at the stumble. We just finished with basically saying you wanted to enjoy your trip still, while yeah. while also making content which i uh, <laughs> with my recent florida trip i 100 percent agree with that because trying to get stuff like get to get these shots and get the content what quotations are of that <laughs> but yeah. that, that you see just like with like your content eye you're like but you're with your group or you're like you, you keep stopping them and i'm just like i feel bad <laughs> yeah and, and then like <laughs> when you're trying to go from place to place you know, it, it can feel like you, sometimes like I don't ever want to make a video and feel like I'm being forced to make the video. Yep. Like I want to just enjoy the park. And I think that even from other people who are were making content on this trip, a lot of people were like, I think more in being in the moment. And yeah, I think we were like, talking about that in Discord is like everybody was living in this in the time instead of just behind a screen the whole time which was nice it was just so amazing to where i i literally took maybe like 10 pictures in california over yeah. four days like i i just i did not want to be on my phone i was just enjoying everything so much yeah and i mean i i took a lot of content but like a lot of it is just not me in front of the camera uh yeah. shout out by the way to another uh channel that's growing rapidly uh, who was on a stumble with us, Bryant from Coaster365. Yes. 
Um, he is killing it with what I, he's doing. I actually and, saw him in my overlay in Chicago. Uh, oh, oh, did you? Funny. Yeah. The the dedication he has to making these these daily coaster reviews is insane. Especially because he's um, in our home park right now, Kings Dominion. Yeah, shout out to yeah, Brian. He is. Man. Yeah, he's uh, he's doing a great job, and uh, I'm. It's crazy that he started as a Twitter page, you know, like a Twitter following. That's where he began. Yeah, his story's yeah. crazy and, too. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, just as Twitter was drew, drew people in, and then now it's turned into YouTube. It's he's doing a great job. Uh, so if, if you're ever looking for content that, uh, especially about coasters and somebody who's going to give you a genuine opinion about them, he's the guy to watch. I'll tell you what. And daily. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, 365 days a year, he hasn't missed one yet. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, ever since um, he started, like, yes, yeah. I, I don't think because yeah, as you said, he basically did this. Uh, he does a full format of what his Twitter does and talks about a coaster in that day, but he, uh, yep. but I really don't think he did miss a day, man. Because <laughs> I've been following him since just before twenty twenty, and yeah. yeah, like, well, I see I him on my page every day. day. Uh, of comments on his uh, on his YouTube channel, uh, I told him as a joke, uh, like second day into the year, I was I was commenting on his videos every day, and I told him on the channel, so I'm not going to miss a day. So if you miss a day, I, that's the only reason I'll miss one. Uh, so I've every single day of this year, I have commented on his video. So we'll see how how long. If I mean, if he makes it, I'll make it. You know, I guess it's a good challenge. Uh, but well, before we really get into the stumble talk in Cali, we gotta talk about the boring news. Ah, <laughs> uh, is news boring when it's coasters? Well, that's the thing, and oh, there's two things I want to talk about that isn't necessarily on the itinerary because it's almost like a recurring topic at this point, and more top thrill dragster rumors. I yeah. think El Toro put uh, Ryan put a video out about that t- today or the the other day. Yeah, I have not had a chance to check that video out, but yeah, it's okay. The TLDR summarization more. It's looking like to his source, it is confirmed that Zimperla is making it. Spike extended layout, and the top hat, like the track on the top hat, will be changed. So interesting news update on the top thrill situation. I, I if Zimprilla can pull this off, just kudos to them. That's one big step into the into the big leagues. That's all I could say. I I never got to ride uh, top thrill in its original glory. We're in the same club. Um, that I'm was a yeah. You're you're in, you're the, in the cool the kids club, of, I guess about that ride to me was I heard about it growing up Uh, I had a childhood friend who grew up in the area of Sandusky and he always talked about you know um, top thrill this and top thrill that and I have actually now ridden King to Ka because you know with us being here in South Jersey uh, getting on King to Ka, and actually, I've been to um, Thorpe Park over in Europe in London, Ooh. and they have uh, what's that called? Is it Stealth? stealth I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, and Stealth is just the baby sister of King to Ka, basically, uh, and Top Thrill. They're very similar in ride. Um, I- I'll be honest, uh, <laughs> maybe this is a hot take. King to Ka is great and it's exhilarating, but uh, if Top Thrill doesn't have, if, if Top Thrill was very similar, I hope they do something bigger with it. I don't I mean do, to be like, eh. I do slightly prefer Dragster to Ka because of the lap bars, like having written okay. it in the original form, but I'm a bit impartial to King to Ka because I got a front row rollback. Roll you got a front row rollback? <laughs> I did. I dead ass watched a rollback happen 
right before, right, like I was in line to the next train, oh. and it rolled back this last season. Oh my, yeah, I, I went December. to Great Adventure for the first time this last season. Or October, it was October. It was cold, so like it, it had just the park had just opened, so it was still running, and it was like so it was right before they closed. Car for the season, uh, right. and it was like early in the earlier in the morning of the park, and it got a rollback. Literally, I was standing in the front row waiting for it, and I'm like, I can't believe that happened right before I got on. Um, That's how I feel but, about Velasa Coaster because I always seem to miss the rollback by a train or two. It's one of those like I, I like King to Ka and yeah, it's exhilarating, but um, I hope that they do something. Uh, substantial with Top Thrill if it's going to uh, really stand out to me as a coaster. I mean, King to Cost stands out it because of its speed, you know, and it's it's height. I agree, but couldn't agree more. Other really. than that, other than that, it's not really like it doesn't it doesn't even land probably in my top twenty five of coasters, you know, and that says yeah. a lot because it's 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 a great ride, but. I could name a ton of other ones that I'm like, holy shit, over. Definition of a one-trick pony. Yeah. Bas- yeah, 100%. Uh, and so my goal is to see Top Thrill do way better. Hopefully. We'll see. I also forgot the one thing. What was your hottest take? <laughs> oh, my hot take? Oh, people. All right. Uh, Jin, Theme Park Daddy is going to be real mad. <laughs> That's being, Hallam being Lover. B and M inverts are trash. <laughs> <gasps> okay, that kind of hurts me too because I don't necessarily disagree. Yeah, he's he's indifferent. All right, RC will be like, you know what? I'll I'll join in the shit post here. But <laughs> <laughs> listen, I feel like I got beat up by a, a a trash truck anytime I get off one of those, and it literally most of them now okay i will i i have to i have to revert my statement a tad because silver bullet at nuts was in, was really really good it was really huh. good it's better than all the other inverts i've been on whoa um really? that includes montu that whoa. includes Batman. yeah i preferred silver bullet over any of those but i will say this still didn't love it <laughs> still didn't love it and I think, uh, uh it's an end of day ride for me. If I'm going to have to get the credit, I'm going to push it to the last ride of the day. If I'm not like hitting any night rides on things, cause I will leave there with the biggest migraine Ooh. on almost every invert I've ever ridden. Even silver bullet. After I wrote it, I wrote it with the whole, uh, the whole crew of buzz bars when we took over the entire train. And I lived, I, Got off that ride saying, I wish I hadn't eroded it a second time. <laughs> Damn. That's oh, my hot God. take. When I said about my hot take, I said, there's going to be some people that are going to be like, yikes. All right. Yeah, Montu's but, pretty elite. So that's why I'm like, Damn. I will say one of the smoothest inverts I've been on. Now, I've done Montu since the repaint. So I can I can say that I don't think the repaint did a whole lot for it, in my opinion. Um, but Batman at Magic Mountain was probably one of the smoothest inverts I've been on. It didn't feel so rattly. Well, I, wasn't there a thing in the workshop where the guy said they switched the wheels on Batman the Ride at Six Flags Magic Mountain to a different type of wheel, so it actually runs slower, but I think smoother? And like the wheels don't. I think he fast. did say something about that. If I'm, you, you might be right on that. I, I don't remember. I re- go to the yeah. I didn't go to the tour, but someone told me that he said that. Oh, I, was like, oh, that's I think somebody that's did say that. Um, I just don't remember where it is. Um, it was a great tour, uh, but it was a information overload for somebody who like also was uh, looking yeah. around at everything that was around me. Yeah. Um. So I wouldn't be surprised because it was definitely a smoother experience than most inverts that I've ridden. And I also personally. found that Batman the Ride clone to be my least favorite. So I think that it definitely ran slower with the different Which wheels. is 
I mean, my wife loves inverts, and she'll force me on them even if I don't. Like, if we go to Bush Gardens, Tampa, <laughs> she loves them. She'll be like, Montu, and I'm like, oh, God. I'll um, walk past Montu and keep going to Kumba. Right. I, they I'll are past... so close. They are so I, close. <laughs> yeah, it, she's like, I will go around Montu, and I'm like, nope. I don't, I could care less. Uh, and people love it. Uh, and so I'm a little scared to hit Dorney Park. Because oh, what a terrible Talon, <laughs> Well, with with Talon and everyone hypes it up and just, you know, nope. well, I guess, no, the only person that really hypes up Talon the most is Jen. Um, oh, that's not good. But I I don't want to be the bearer of bad news to her if I ride it and I think it's trash. What if that's, like, so. the best one, though? What if she's, like... You know what? Listen, if I go there and I ride it, I will call her <laughs> Theme Park Daddy. You hear her here first. I will say you are Theme Park Daddy if she is right. Uh, I'm not kidding. So, that's but, really all that we missed uh, with that. But Top Thrill, that was the news update with it earlier. It, yeah. There was a Cedar Fair investor call. This is the last thing that wasn't on the itinerary, and then, and then we'll actually move on to that. But there were interesting things that were said there. Yeah, who was who was it that was talking about that on Twitter today? I so saw... Josh from Station Weight, which he's been yeah, he's been putting out content himself, and man, it's growth. <laughs> yeah, he's killing it. Yeah, he he's definitely killing it. He just said something about how. Coaster Studios and El Toro Ryan were like inspirations to him, and now like he's feels like he's starting to find his own like way, which is awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mad props to him. Oh, uh, but listening, he was listening in on that. There's also Andrew Hyde, who's also also always a man that is super into the industry. If you want to make like insider, just like different perspective. On reasons why parks might do stuff, Andrew Hyde is a guy to fall for that. But uh, Cedar Fair is apparently improving their apps in 2024. <laughs> Which, mm-hmm. as someone who dabbles in software development, but really is mostly Windows server network engineer, and like they need improve. Like so many theme parks need improvements with their apps. I would say. Um, so hopefully it is a good improvement. Uh, they're confirmed that basically they're still going to be transforming uh, or that transforming whole sections of their top five parks have massive return on investments. So they will heavily invest in it going forward. So I guess the stuff like Jungle Expedition and King's Dominion, uh, the new aeronautical area in Carowinds, and also the new area at uh, King's Island that is coming out. But those aren't even out yet, so we'll see. We'll talk about, I guess, the King's Island one with, uh, with, uh, with the Fight of Fear and Orion. With uh, all that... I don't, what is that called, RC? Area something? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what it's called. <laughs> Area 72, maybe? The Space Place at King's Island, where Orion is in Fight Area of Fear. 72, right. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the space play, I was going to call it that, but otherwise, that, they're, apparently that is helping them out, so they're going to continue doing that for a lot of their other parks. Um, mm-hmm. Another thing, apparently, oh, that's it, basically. <laughs> Wasn't there another thing? I'm going to Twitter right now, because uh, I, I remember him say Josh posting something about Well, uh, West, you said dragster news, but what was the other thing you said? The reoccurring topics oh that was that was that one dragster and what else though oh that was it oh, it was just dragster could have swore you said there was two reoccurring things i i, I can't oh, think of i one. remember he's he's josh said uh on twitter he said i love how they openly admit that the prestige pass is an experiment right oh which that'll be I don't know how many people even have that yet. Or... I I don't. I renewed I, uh, platinum. I just got my Cedar Fair Pass uh, for the first time uh, on this trip. I got it for Knott's. 
uh, cause I didn't, I, I wasn't going to pay for one day ticket whenever, uh, uh, the annual pass was not that much more expensive. Uh, plus I, like I said, I plan on going to a bunch more parks this year and, uh, I think I'm actually going to hold off on, uh, Cedar point this year. Cause I might as well wait for a dragster to be done, but I plan on hitting some other parks. I mean, might as well just have the, the pass, but I do not have that. I just got the platinum or whatever their top one is for that. Yeah, because I know I had to or... pay more. <laughs> this year, I had to pay a dollar more. So, I don't know if it's like Six Flags where some people still have like their memberships from like 2016, 27, or whenever they changed it over to in flip-flop from a pass to a membership back to a pass. And some people are still paying with their original benefits and all that stuff from years ago. So, who knows? I, I got my... I'm a little salty with Six Flags, like, pricing thing, the way they did that. Um, mostly because I got my pass, I think, back in probably June of 22 for Six Flags. My, I mean, I got it for Great Adventure because we're here in South Jersey right now. Um, and my the pass right now is, like, over $100 cheaper than what I paid. Yeah. Thanks, so man. I, uh, I wonder if I could call and be like, really? But I mean, it's just a hundred bucks. It's not like it's the end of the world for me. But so it is what it is. Moving on to what Andrew said. So Cedar Fair released their quarter four in fiscal year twenty twenty two results, but the things that they sent on from the investor call from that was. The investment strategy will remain the same of, quote-unquote, rotating investments in major marketable attractions among our smaller market parks, end quote. And they basically said uh, history shows that adding major new rides and attractions at our smaller market parks see immediate impact with increases in attendance, guest spending, and season passes. So, hopefully, like with the Zambezi Zinger, we also see... And maybe Dorney Park, which we're, we'll jump right into that. It's a good segue. We see these parks that Cedar Fair seems to have forgotten about actually getting some love. Because they like the return. It's looking good. You know, I'm not I'm not thrilled to see Dorney Park just get another B&M. All right, let's just jump into that, shall we? Because, <laughs> well... That's one thing we have here is generally we just think B and M stands for boring and mild. Yep. For the most part. <laughs> uh, I mean, unless you're hits. talking about Mako, I mean, Mako's pretty pretty much a banger in my opinion. I, I think it's I think it's pretty pretty great too. Uh, I do floater hype or floater is floater for me. It can't be float ejector. There's one part for me. I never really get the float ejector. And so the speedo. That's when I get it. Mm. I need a. Uh, we're gonna be skipping sea rolls when we go back. So. <laughs> yes. I mean, we could probably just swoop in real quick. I I don't know if I want to buy a pass or if I oh, want to get a, a bush <laughs> ticket. Well, I I hate the chain, so <laughs> I do not have a pass at the moment. Oh, you see. That's that's understandable. But that's that's understandable. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a surcharge on the pass. <laughs> I'm I wouldn't put it past so, but so Dorney Park is getting a new coaster. It looks like it's a B and M. I thought is... they approved the. Didn't they approve it? So did that town hall happen? I that think so. Movie. I think I saw Jake saying that. Okay. While Jake said that, Jake said um, somewhere that it was approved. Well, this B and M is seeming like it's coming to Dorney Park, which I would have liked the wedding shuttle coaster, but this is obviously has more glitz and glamour. I get it. <laughs> I don't think what's the nearest dive coaster from here? Is it Griffin? Griffin. Yeah. Come on now. So, I guess it makes sense. 
Dorney Park actually tweeted tweeted uh, 30 minutes ago a wink. So mm. <laughs> I, they also did make a tweet that doesn't... <laughs> showing the uh, showing the plot of land. Uh, yeah, it was like a week or two ago, but interesting. B and M dives. I like Griffin a lot. I like it a lot. I'm upset I didn't get Sheikru because I hear it's very close to Griffin. Um, Valraven. Sheikra, I have, like I said before, I have a soft spot in my heart for Sheikra. Um, that's, I, I have a video coming out soon that's going to talk about Sheikra uh, with some detail. So be on the lookout Ooh. for that one if you're interested about Sheikra. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer Sheikra of dive coasters that I've been on. Yeah, if it's just I know they're gonna give it vests. So for me, the whole dive feeling kind of just goes away. I haven't rode any of the yeah. newer dives past Valraven. Now, but... honestly, Hang Time felt better than any B and M dive coaster I've been on. Mm. Just saying. Hang Time. Okay, let me say something about Hang Time. It was a, It was. I was not prepared for it, um, but also that ejector hill. Oh my um, gosh! That was a full send yeet moment that I had not was not expecting at all, uh, and I think that took the show for me of that ride. The yeah. dive, the whole nine. That was the show runner. Is that that, that yeet moment right at the end? Oh. Uh, I'm glad that ride's getting to love me because I heard some just middling opinions about it for years, years, and now the buzz bars got out there and everyone having. A, I heard a lot of great opinions about that ride. Yeah, it was it was it was really good. Ghost Rider was good too, but uh, I personally I preferred Hang Time over Ghost Rider. <laughs> well, Ooh, we are hot. we're we're, we're tra- cutting the track right now. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, I hope they I hope this is like the most inventive V and M dive machine yet, huh? It, it looks like it is kind of not that tall. It's like one of the middling ones, like one sixty. So, and the plot of land is not too big from what I remember. The plot or the plans look like. So, who knows? Dorney should be better. Well, why not? Granted, it's not our favorite model here on the cast but the public love it so if it works if it ain't broke don't fix it uh this is a cute little one these uh new mountain go-karts in china <laughs> i know you've been talking about go-karts West. Well, yeah so i thought it was i thought it was ironic i i'm getting in the hobby of it but this is this isn't anything serious this is for amusement and fun and a very Efficient way. You don't have to worry about gas or anything. I will say though, if you're light, you're you're just you're just slow. You're just slow. I gotta like wear like gotta wear weights on me to give me some weight on that. Uh, I feel like being heavier it always weighs me down with go karts. It's funny. There was actually a video I was watching. It gives like the smallest like milliseconds. Uh, but this is actually coming to Heartbeat Paradise near Hangzhou, China. Uh, going down to Tatis is testing. Oh, <laughs> to Tatis and Park Asterix. It just looks, it just looks silky. It looks sexy. That's all I can say. That was that was a park I I am sad we did not get. Well, me and my wife were in Europe in July. Uh, I completely skipped my mind because she wanted to go to Disneyland Paris so bad. Oh, uh, but how was it? Disneyland Paris? Yeah. Um, well, they have the best Haunted Mansion. Hmm. Not Haunted Mansion. Not Haunted Mansion. Uh, Tower Terror. Okay. Uh, and I think even better. Now, I just rode Guardians, which mm, it was, I thought it was incredible. Um, but Big Thunder and Space Mountain 
hyperspace mountain out there blow any of the space mountain or big thunder mountain here in the u.s like they are so much better well hyperspace mountain is an actual thrill ride it's an actual thrill ride yeah. yeah i mean it's an actual like it inverts and everything but i mean it's it's much i think both out there like they're totally different experience and big thunder out there is just it's intense for it being a family coaster it's got some it packs a punch. Yeah. I, I totally missed out on Park Asterix, and I was a little sad about that. We really, uh, I should have pushed to go there while we were out there. Now that's looking like the standout. They're trying to make it because Tutatis looks like some of those elements just don't even look like they should be happening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so hopefully that gets out soon. Uh, one of the main reasons why we need to make a Midwest trip soon, Silver Dollar City was teasing for uh, February 13th. Obviously, that day has passed. And now we know that Fire in the Hole, the hybrid, uh, not actually like hybrid, but like the mix of Dark Ride and Coaster is having its final year this year when it it's having its final season. Who knows what they're going to do with it exactly. But you need to go out and get your tickets now to get your last rides. Essentially. Definitely got that prioritized. Well, and I am I give mad props to Silver Dollar City for, like, actually, like, one, doing it justice by giving it, like, an entire season to say goodbye. Like, yep. in, like you know, really like before the season starts saying, Hey, this is it, you know, like this is your, our plans instead of like mid season, just being like, Oh, by the way. Um, uh, so I give you them that four props weeks for that. to, uh, <laughs> right. Book, book your trip. <laughs> so I, I give them props for that. And I also give them props for the way they're doing it. I mean, having like a whole pr production for like the announcement was, was pretty cool to see i mean i wasn't like i wasn't waiting for the news like wait, refreshing twitter for the news but right. like i'm glad that they went around you know they put in the extra effort to make it you know look like show that this is it this is what we're doing and not like teasing it you know like what we might do you know i i i've never personally ridden road fire in the hole uh I just haven't made it Silver Dollar City, but I am going to try to get out there before the season's out to get a ride on it, so that way I can say I've done it. Yeah, I've always heard it is such a quirky yet fun ride. Uh, I It's one of the main reasons why I really want to make Silver Dollar City a park I hit this year. Now, yeah. uh, the announcement, honestly, I, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, oh, this is just sad. <laughs> this is sad uh, but they were yeah. somewhat teasing to some of the replies saying like it is kind of you know just bitter sweet uh, so that there is potentially stuff coming in the horizon so what we do not know yet SNS Axis baby <laughs> just put them everywhere uh, I hope not <laughs> oh yeah because they're somewhat inverts it's not even, it's not even that. It's just, man, I, I rode my first SNS Axis at Great Adventure and it was like Joker. It was not very, it just, it, it doesn't feel like it, it, it hurts. It hurts the body. That's yeah, all the, I gotta say. The free spins generally, yeah. But the SNS Axis coaster give me that. Give me that baby. Give me that prototype. Uh so Serengeti Fire is opening. One of the best flat rides to come out in the pen modern times probably. Just just reliable and good. Uh the uh I had I had two coasters confused, my bad. <laughs> oh. 
I was looking at this, and I'm like, I thought you were talking about that part in the jet lag. But I roll this moment. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> the aura is just emanating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but yeah. Really... I'm looking at pictures now. and mm -hmm. It's the right prototype me and RC are always geeking over. And I won at King's Dominion. Honestly, yes. this wouldn't be bad. Maybe, maybe so. Okay, yeah, bring it. That's an S axis, King's Dominion, please. Volcano replacement. Uh, but but say, Serengeti Flyer, you were talking about. Yeah, it's bad. opening tomorrow as of recording this. It will be open by the time this cast comes out. So if you're a Florida local, go out and ride it. I guess. I mean, I guess it's not that important. But if, if the next time you go, <laughs> you have a, one of the best modern fly rides, in my opinion. It's a reason these things are mm. going everywhere. Oh, man. The one at SeaWorld San Antonio is just amazing. But, but what did you like yeah, about no. that one, though? What's up? I said, what did you like about that one, though? I mean, it's just, it's really big and it's over the water. It's a lot of mm. hang time, maritime. Nice. I, I, there, there are rides, so I'm a thrill seeker like, you know, none other. But there are some things that just push the boundaries for me. Swings are one of them. <laughs> the, the swing style flat rides. Yeah. I, I just can't bring myself to do it. Um, okay. That and drop towers, believe it or not. I have a listener that could relate to the swings. <laughs> yeah, it's not my like. My wife is like, "You gotta wreck the flyer when we go home," and I'm like, "No." Like, you do I really can. have to? Or, uh... No, I'll probably do it just to say I did it, but mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be fun. Well, hopefully, it's not too bad for you. Maybe we'll you find enjoyment. Uh, so, you know, maybe I'll ride it and I'll love it. Who knows? Yeah. Because, like, it it, it was kind of like that because, I for some reason, I just didn't ride drop towers. Like, I have no issue with them. I just stopped. I was like, oh, whatever. And then we we rode it, like, right after a Twisted Marathon this year. And it was just such a good ride. It was, like, at the end of the season, too. I'm mad we didn't get more rides on it. <laughs> Uh, so Six Flags, yes, to Texas. Jeffrey Siebert standing here. They are bringing back Scream Break after hour of it. I didn't even know Scream Break was a thing. Um, so I think this is kind of like a like a Halloween or horror event for yes. Spring Break. I did not know about it either until I saw. And that sounds this, 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 this circulating. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I, I'm glad that like we're seeing more of this becoming more of a, just a common theme for parks to pull out for events because people like being scared. Uh, I'm I've never been to like I didn't even know Screen Break was a thing until you sent the itinerary out. <laughs> yeah, a lot um, of people just figuring out. <laughs> But I also haven't made it to uh, Fiesta Texas, which is uh, my bucket list of parks to this this year. Um, so maybe I mean I don't think I have time between now and then um, to figure Texas out a way there. Expensive. But yeah, I don't know if I want to do that for. Yeah, so for Texas locals, if that interests you, go ahead and make it for out. For sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, my fire alarm went off in my house. I am fine, but it obviously put another pause to the recording. So, if you're a Texas local and like horror, go out and support Scream Week at Fiesta Texas. But, from here we moved on to Wildcats Revenge Construction. And how that progress is going. There is a lot of stuff going on. But we're back. If you're Texas, <laughs> go to Scream Week. 
Uh, next, I was wrong about Wildcat's construction. Uh, it seems like it's going pretty well. They're showing a lot of uh, construction updates. A lot of, uh, I would say it's around 30-40% to 40 done. Um, it looks like it's going to be uh, a pretty good RMC. I don't know. I think it might be. I don't think it's going to. It might be. No, I, 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 I'm mostly on the agreement of, like, probably, yeah, pretty good. Which, pretty good is still great ride. Excellent ride on. <laughs> but, will it be the upper echelon of the RMCs? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it'd be hard to compete with Guazi. I mean. Uh, Guazi... I mean, for some reason, Steve has been getting just a lot of just slander. <laughs> I've yet to ride it. That is uh, one I want to get on, but I'm going to wait for Cedar Point, I think. That's funny. Until... Uh, no, but for real, I there's more people saying, oh, it's more overrated in the sense that it's not a top one for them. Where I would just say the ride is just so popular now. Like it's just that it's that ride. There will be people yeah. that have it, not as the greatest. Now it's not my number one, but it's uh, really damn close to my number one. It, it, and as long as it's in your top twenty, I would say it's that's fine. Top twenty yeah. in the world, you have that. Interesting. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, Duh. so now on to more of the more of the meat of all of this. So Disney is apparently laying off seven thousand employees. Uh, this is uh, it's funny because they released a whole bunch of trailers the same day, like to kind of soften the blow, like they always do. But they it's for all departments, and that's about three point two percent of their employment force. Hopefully, those employees can find someplace else, and maybe it's across the street, because about a few days later, Universal said, hey, we're hiring up to 2,500 people, all departments. <laughs> I mean, Universal is, um, is making major progress on Epic Universe right there. Mm -hmm. I mean... They're going to have to start ramping up probably even more than that. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, you're talking about staffing a whole nother part. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, so, like, I know they said a lot of it was for the main resort now, but I could see potentially setting people up or getting people ready for, obviously, like you said, Epic Universe, because there has to be a whole, just whole new set of protocols for that park. I mean, if they get them hired and cross-trained sooner, mm -hmm. get them trained on stuff in the other parks and then start cycling them over there, that way they can have... I mean, it, it makes sense. I, I, I have my opinions about Disney. Um, growing up around Disney and, like, just seeing how much they've tanked, in my opinion. Same. Uh, I, I personally am here for it to watch Universal just shit all over them. Um, <laughs> Healthy conversation. Yeah, just my, my opinion. I mean, it's just like uh, me, because I'm a tech guy. It's just like when I saw AMD come to the rise that it is over Intel, and now they are. It's just like, you see Intel trying to clamor and fight back, but we all know. Anyways, <laughs> on tech people, yes. Universal, we, we needed this. We need someone to be like, to kind of put Disney in check. Because a lot of people are seeing it now. And a lot of people are saying this now. Like, if you want a better experience, generally, or like overall, then you have no bias to IPs, go to Universal. You will have a better time. I, I would 100% agree with that. I mean, I, I also really love Twitter and watching like the social media uh, people yes. for all the different parks just like shitting all over Disney 
I think it's hilarious because Disney never has anything to snappy to say. And it's probably for their, like, their image, you know? But, like, SeaWorld earlier tweeted, you can always run down to SeaWorld three times between now and the end of the month to be one of the first ride pipeline. No light cycle required. Yeah. And that? Yeah. Like. Because people are having issues with that preview. Why can't people just queue for a new ride? I didn't even want to put that in the cast. I was like, this is... It should just be known that if a new ride opens at Disney, it's <laughs> it's not going to be clean or anywhere efficient, which kind of doesn't make sense. It's not what Disney is known for at all. Disney, stop getting on our cast, okay? Stop making us talk about you. <laughs> hey, this, this Twitter is, is real, man. We're okay. going to be all over the oh. bad side of them. So, this one I have thoughts on. Because moving on, back over to Texas. Codaland, it's not looking good in my opinion. Seeming like Palindrome was now likely for 2024. Mm. Uh, it's seeming like they're st- trying to boast, oh, we're going to open with 27 rides. And it's like, okay, you only showcased like two roller coasters. And you haven't even started working on the coaster that was supposed to be open by now. I'm not sure about this part, fellas, personally. I mean, I've heard very little about it, and I think that's just due to me saying maybe I we, I don't want to like dive into that yet. No, that's all I'll let it, too. Like, there's no social media. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's no marketing for it. They they've shown their POVs, and there's some IAPA, like there's some people showcasing oh because the what is it a circuit breaker. The official POV was shown there, and they were actually talking about that there. But there's just so little movement and traction in the actual park itself. It makes you really wonder what is actually happening behind the scenes. Yeah. I'm calling it now. It's not going to be nearly what they've taunted it to be. Yeah. I mean, the track's there. Right, uh, you need and they just need the engineers to the work to put it up. So hopefully, Codaland, you get a really strong opening for 2024. Maybe they're just trying to make sure there's no unevenness, kind of like a Lost Island situation where uh, the park opened missing their standout, and the attendance was not great at all. But hopefully this year, because Mutsunagi's not open or Matanu. That Intamin Blitz from overseas. Uh, now that that is relocated there and now functioning, the park gets boosted it needs. And a proper, I would say, opening year. Uh, so, more. this is more thoughts. Because King's Dominion, have you been paying attention, RC, to like their updates like every weekend? <laughs> no, I have not. Yeah, like, I'll just see, because like, obviously they're year-round now. And, you know, now they have a Valentine's event with getting cookies and all this stuff. And the park is always either closing early or just closed for the day. At least maybe once guaranteed for the week. Maybe the whole weekend it's closed. And I'm like, is it worth it? Is Bush Gardens saying, like, hey, we saw this. We told you that we we gave you the blueprints. Yeah. Because I think we're just a tad bit too north. Like, you're going to get the nastiness, you know, the points to where, like, it's just jumping up and down between whether it's operable for a lot of rides or not. Maybe they can make the investments and add, like, warmers and stuff. I don't know if, engineering-wise, I don't know if you need that built into a ride or if you can install that later on. But, yeah. Or you could be, like, some rides and just spray water on the track like they do when it's too hot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Terminator's... (laughs) You will literally hear the people. opposite. Eat them up. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I, I, is it worth it? it I, I'm just thinking, like, you're hiring these people, and you're having them come in, paying them for their hours, and then they're not even working because the park closed. So, I don't know how they're... I don't know if this is full last. We'll have to see. 
So now the Six Flags stuff. RC, you are the one that had the big old list of everything. Oh, right. Let me... I'll post that in the chat. Yeah, so... Aaron, if you aren't aware... Um, <laughs> it seems like our Six Flags is cleaning shop with a lot of their... A lot of their rides they just don't deem worthy in, in the new Six Flags era. They They silently removed a lot of rides from a lot of different Six Flags parks. Including yeah, didn't home, they just home park America. Say something about uh, not a coaster, but the parachute ride at Great Adventure just was yeah. taken off the website like two days ago or something. Just 86 yeah. the menu, bro. <laughs> Basically. Chef they are... Celine Basul did not like. They're really taking out a lot of stuff. So you can you parts. can go with this one because you have the whole list. Uh, you can you don't have to talk about all of them, I guess. But what are your well, thoughts? I'll say all the affected parks. There's one, two, twelve different Six Flags parks that are having things removed. Man, so I'm looking over this list now, and I mean, I guess the bottom line is it's it's very interesting that they're making these changes and doing it in a manner to where it's just kind of unannounced and there's no transparency with what's going on. Yeah, like, they're just literally just taking them out months before the season opens and not saying anything. And then like, hey guys, welcome back to the park. A lot of these parks, nothing was added. Yeah, it's not <laughs> they like they're really hinting that anything's guaranteed going forwards like it well, almost the only like they're thing getting rid on, of things and not the adding only thing anything on that list like the list that you sent the only thing i see on there that actually like i don't even think it's replacing it in the same zo area is the six flags over georgia because they're getting one of them just one things yeah yeah but is that replacing that ride or is it a totally different part of the park I'm not sure. I haven't I haven't been to over Georgia. I know that at Fiesta Texas it's it's replacing the Thunder Beach Speedway that's getting removed, but Yeah. Interesting. But I mean Six Flags America, for example, is losing like an entire section of the park in like the Mind Eraser area. So <laughs> Is that lining up with Salim's vision of experiences? Is he trying to set it up for 2024 and be like, hey, here's a new area, which probably will have dueling, um, dueling, um, Skeddy Bowl coaster. Uh, <laughs> and, brawl -ah, a new ride. We just had to do this for now. I guess, right? They have yeah. a good Well, why not? Well, why not, like, properly announce it? I mean, Six Flags. They just... Yeah. <laughs> they have their own ways. <laughs> I mean, they did say we were going to open the, the parking gate at 8.15 at uh, Magic Mountain. Yeah, what was it like? 8.35. Yeah. <laughs> we had a line literally out to the road. That was Wild. ridiculous. But they did a great job for us, though, aside from, like, minor hiccups. Yeah. But we'll talk about that in a little bit, I'm sure. Uh, so I guess the, the biggest ride getting removed is Mind Eraser, and that's rumored to be relocated. Oh, my God, bro. A relocated SOC. Let's go. Do you think they're going like to do most... any, like, lap bar or vest, at least? Maybe, maybe vests. I could see that. Because, like, they're really going to take one of the worst SLCs. I don't know if it's the worst, but one of the worst SLCs. And relocating it, which then probably will make it the worst SLC at that point. Well, uh, the thing is, it's almost every single Six Flags Park has either a Batman Invert clone or an SLC already. So it, it most likely is going to go to Frontier City or Great Escape. Huh. Well, because like all the other ones, 
already have an SLC or an invert. Man. Well, I guess I'm not exactly sad to see Mind Eraser go, but seeing a whole section of the park it's still <laughs> disappear, at least for a season. I mean, there, there's no indication if what's going to happen with this. It's for Six Flags America. Sorry, it's, it's like another kick when they're already on the ground, you know. Right. That's I was looking point. through the itinerary talking about some of the news. Uh, did you guys talk about, I don't know if you talked about it on the last podcast. I haven't had a chance to dive in. But uh, about the rumor uh, go floating around Icebreaker. Oh, I heard about that. You see, no, I did with, not hear about that. So there, it was a rumor there. about uh, the potentially. I think one of the trains is off, or all of them are off. Yeah, there's. So from what I saw on Twitter, somebody had said that the uh, one of the ride ops, which you know, take it with a grain of salt because we don't uh, obviously no con- confirmation, but that there was a train they were running a one train less, which isn't out of the norm on a slow day. But that it was being worked on, and there's apparently they're talking about they've been taking off the comfort collars and replacing it with seat belts similar to full throttle. Interesting. Which, if they do that and it's successful, that means they could probably lower the height restriction back down. Yeah. And then, in that same regard, would that not mean that they could get rid of the comfort collars on Tigris? Because, I mean, I mean, they're very similar trains. Yeah. I mean, same trains. So why, why, why not? I mean, full throttle inverts. So why couldn't you do it for? I don't know. Just my opinion. Yeah, because for me, they aren't necessarily uncomfortable once I'm on the ride. It's just getting in and out is like. It feels like yeah, I, I will say am rustling, <laughs> like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. you feel like you're like stuck in it. Yeah, but like then again, on Tigris, I hate them. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I can only really ride Tigris in the front row because it feels like you're stuck. Like you can't move at all with the. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I just I was curious if you guys had talked about it in the last podcast because I think it was a, like last week that that was talked about or somewhere around last week. Yeah, time. So I was just fast, curious. Man. Cause I was just curious if you guys had chatted about it yet. That's kind of crazy to think. Cause like that was something I was thinking about putting on, but I was I didn't see any concrete on it. But it is interesting because the more people were talking about it, like you know, right? A write up isn't gospel either. But no, but yeah. at the same time, a write up was who said. Uh, I guess we could talk about that later. But I, just a little talk to about Twisted Colossus. It was a ride op that said that they might actually have it open and they they might be testing it. And the night before our second day at Stumble, they were testing it after the ride op said it. So maybe, I mean, like I said, like, take it with a grain of salt, but maybe it's maybe it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so or dueling raptors come into Wallaby Holland with one side being for families. I thought this was pretty cool when i Uh, saw that in my feed i thought that was really interesting yeah i think i really love it when parks find exactly like i guess exactly what they're looking for in attraction and it's just it hits so many marks man like so you get one for thrill seekers so obviously you can and you can both ride at the same time so the say if like my nieces or nephew if they can't ride or if they don't want to ride the thrill side we can still have a great time it's just uh. so it seems like they're already beginning construction yeah is it 2024 in the speed zone area new zamperla coaster uh well they're building a zamperla coaster for that 2025 is the is the uh double rmc raptor coaster okay so yeah, this is same. I think it'll be great. Yeah, same park that has Untamed, so it'll be Europe's first single rail coaster. So cool, cool. They have a whole plan for this park. If you look at this article too, that's great. Uh, 
generally the wallaby parks i are very high on my europe bucket list yes so oh so aquaman congratulations you're finally opening you're finally opening on yeah. march 11th just under a month from now like three weeks uh so yeah texas locals you get a cred that you should have got in 2020 <laughs> uh, so congratulations and that's a running theme that's a running theme over the last couple of years yeah hopefully a lot of that is over now it seemed like all like parks that are opening stuff just like 2023 they announced it a year before it's opening you know uh, it's, in fact a lot of stuff is opening a little too fast because a little bit of the delay because like ah man I'm excited I'm excited to write new stuff this year Speaking of which, um, Air Force One is opening very soon. RMC wow. stands. Just think about that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm what I don't think I'm gonna like go completely out of my way just to hit that. I think it'll be on a trip that I'm doing over Georgia. I'll just make like oh, factor so that close. into my trip. Yeah, they're so close to each other. Like, I don't mean to sound rude, but, like, I think, isn't that, like, the only, like, that's their first coaster, coaster, right? Yeah, they that literally have, spot. I think, three kitty creds, and that is, yeah. and they have an RMC. <laughs> Which is, like, a, they went from zero to 199% way too fast. Yes. <laughs> but, like, it looks great, but I just, I could, I don't foresee myself being, like, let me book a plane ticket to Atlanta. It's to much. just go ride Air Force One. It's definitely much. I I get that. I mean, I I don't know. But now I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go to Atlanta so I can go to Six Flags over Georgia and ride Air Force One. But I don't see it being uh, a solo, let me go there for that trip. Uh, personally. And finally, this is the most meme thing, but I thought it was fake. But it's true. Uh, you guys can apply to become a test rider at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, literally on their website. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me explain what what, what details about the role. Uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach is offering a one person the chance to be appointed roller coaster test rider. According to the director of operations, this role will require an individual with an exceptional sense of fun and excitement to ensure that major rides at Blackpool Pleasure Beach have the necessary thrill factor in time. For the launch of the new season on set, or, uh, excuse me, on Saturday, eighteenth March, the roles and the responsibilities. Successful applicant will be required to test numerous rides, <laughs> to advise when they think improvements should be made, uh, and you can literally apply. It's at the bottom. You can apply to become a test rider. So if that interests Hold you, up. I'm applying right yeah, now. If you want to make a commute from wherever you guys live, uh, I, from six <laughs> six hour flight. Or a 12 hour, 10 hour flight. <laughs> Dead ass. I'm applying right now. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I was thinking about not? it earlier because I was like, I mean, why not? What maybe? experience do you have? Cred count X. <laughs> exactly. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and apply. Go ahead and do that. So. That's crazy. RC, I did <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Luckily enough, they are they have new flights from MCO Orlando to the UK for like two hundred round trip. So why why do you know that? Uh, <laughs> I know that from my friend Mark. Shout out! To I, Mark. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It, was that in Discord or on Twitter that I saw that? I don't know. He can't remember on Snapchat. Oh, well, I'll tell you. Yeah, about that's Marky. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. It's some sort of airline thing or something. Some new. Yeah, it's Nord thing. Nordic Air. I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even care about that. I'll book a flight from wherever just to. <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be a funny experience. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if this. Excuse me. Were like a marketing thing. Like, hey, maybe you're not actually a, a test rider. You know, like you're not actually working at uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, but. Like, that's their quote-unquote mascot. Like, oh, you're the, he's the test rider. He improves the stuff, and it's like, 
Yeah, you maybe you yeah. win, maybe I... if you win, you get flown out, and you know you get cool stuff. Who knows? Maybe they I mean, actually are getting a test ride. Shits and giggles. I mean, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna apply for the shits and giggles as long as I don't giggle and shit. Everything should be good. <laughs> I don't think there's any uh, rides at Blackpool that <laughs> that'll make you giggle yeah. and shit. I mean, <laughs> I guess we'll see. <laughs> Maybe Nemesis on a bad day. That's an Alton Towers, bud. <laughs> Eye rollers moment. You're always putting oh. Nemesis in a different like. Yeah, I don't know anything park. about overseas. My bad. It, you know what? No, Nemesis is the one in Australia, right? <laughs> That's, that's where it is. Rivals. That's, oh no, that's Germany, right? Right, right. Oh, I swear <laughs> no, that was oh the, no! Swear that was the niche one in Russia that no one talks about. Myler? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just naming random shit. <laughs> oh, I love it. So on to the Instagram questions. Finally, the news actually. Uh, I I I I bluffed. It was actually the. Scroll down a little bit. Uh. But the Instagram stuff, I was putting up stuff that uh, you gave me. You gave me the thought of why not ask some of the, some of the people that look at our stories some thoughts, you know, some polls. So that's what I've been doing. And there was a meme one I put in there, but you know, y- you'll see it's the second one. Uh, but this one will Wildcats Revenge be a top five RMC? It was unanimous no from the people that answered. It was about four or five. It seems that we agree as well. It will not, from what we see, our first impressions and of the POV, no no writing or anything, it does not look like it will be on the Mount Rushmore of RMC. But, there'll obviously be an update when we get on it later this year. So, Yeah, I will have, uh, I'm going to have an opinion video out on it once it's, uh, once it's open. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that, I'm glad, uh, El Toro Ryan did the uh, the speed change. Yeah, proper to it. I thought it looked like, weird myself. I was like, "This does not oh, it look did. right." Uh, his his version was uh, better. Yeah. So I guess we'll see how it ends up, but uh, it'll be better than a uh, Wildcat, from what I've heard. So you have some Wildcat lovers, but they are one percent. We'll just say. <laughs> um, as so, this next one is Hershey Park. I put a few uh, to four to answer from amazing all the way to meh. I'd rather go to Knobles, which I thought was a very RC uh, answer. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was unanimous. Amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I voted the worst one. <laughs> you didn't vote. I don't think it was unanimous. <laughs> Hey, if you want to input, you want to rig these polls, you need to get people to vote on them, man. You need to get the... <laughs> make all the counts, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make... I'm just going to make a, a, a shit post account that just goes in and votes on these. The uh, uh, complete opposite of what I would normally vote for. From there, I thought I had all this Griffin stuff on my phone. I was like, you know, why not? So I put in... Uh, what was people's favorite dive coaster and basically from the two that from the two separate polls that I fit in I put eight different uh, Griffin and Valraven are the two that won so we're gonna see this week what ends up winning I hope Griffin wins because man is it just so much better of a dive machine than Valraven uh, come on Come on, viewers. <laughs> uh, then we went to the Vera b and model. Hyper Giga and the Wing. You voted on this one. I saw you vote on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I, I think we know what will win. But uh, if the Wing comes out on top, you know, we'll have to see. I'm like actually enjoying seeing these cute little wing coasters coming out for B and M. Well, did you see the Legoland one testing? Yep. I'm like that looks borderline boring, but like, 
Maybe it's going to be great. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I think it's going to be pretty good. Gonna... Listen, Daddy Pig's my number one, then, you know? <laughs> oh, weren't you trying to make that, uh, wasn't someone trying to make that their a cred count, like a, a milestone or something? Daddy Pig? I, I mean, it's a fun. it would be a funny ass, uh, <laughs> milestone no i That's think i think rc you were thinking about it but you're like it's not worth getting into peppa's pig land because the prices yeah the prices are so to go to legoland you have discounts <laughs> yeah just give me a shout we'll figure it out trust Ooh. me we'll have to see i don't know if there's any other time i am going to a lego <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm not guaranteeing I can get you in, but, like, I can make a couple phone calls. I know half of – so Winter Haven is my hometown, Central Florida. Like, that's where I'm from. So, like, a lot of my town works at Legoland because it's, like, one of the biggest things to – business biggest companies to work for in the area. That's cool. Right. So, so like – yeah, I I lived in the town and I've been to Legoland once. <laughs> yeah, okay. I used to go to it when it was Cypress Gardens. Whoa! Like, like pre I had Cypress Gardens annual passes when I was younger. So like, pre Legoland. So, that's just a side note. Just that's, let me know if you decide you want to go to Legoland. I don't know, RC. We're going, we're going uh, in March. Early March, trying to hit Legoland. Potentially. Okay. Credits uh, are credits. So. Okay. You see, he's a credit whore. I get him as I go. I don't necessarily. We don't necessarily have to go out of the way to get Legoland. Well, are you doing Bush Gardens while you're down there too? Yes. So you're doing BGT. I would assume Universal. That's probably it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, Legoland's literally in the dead center. Like, in theory, it, it really is in the dead center. Like, if you go there and you don't send me a picture from this sign, like, I would be sad because I know, like, where you're standing, <laughs> I, I know everything about that little area. You know, the gardens that are actually attached to Legoland are worth the walk through. It's incredibly beautiful. Mm. Um, so, like, if you go, just, like, let me know. I'll see what I can pull. Yeah. I know plenty of, like, I, I would say probably more than 100 people I know work at Legoland. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> like, that's my hometown I grew up. Mm -hmm. there, if you want a dive bar to go to that's down the road from Legoland, that's like a you know, shithole, you know, hole in the wall type dive bar. You'll fit right in. I could tell you where to go. Like that's my, that's like my little stomping grounds. So, so basically, we need to go to the dive bar, then ride Daddy's Pig. Right. Yep. That's what you need to do. Go get you. Go get you a two dollar PBR oh from from a two dollar tall boy PBR from the dive bar. Drive five minutes up the road and go ride Daddy Pig. All right. You you think I'm kidding? I'm not. That's exactly what you could do. <laughs> That's so. Uh, you know, I, I'm somewhat tempted and I'm mad. Like, <laughs> there's like a sub. Listen, <laughs> if you guys want to wait to like do Legoland one day. Like, if you want to go and do it, I won't be able to make it down before, like, in March, or I would. Like, I would book a flight and come just to bullshit with y'all, because I have passes to all the parks. So, like, I could come and, like, bullshit with you guys, but um, I don't know if I could plan a trip that soon. We're we're going, we got a new contract. My wife's a travel nurse. Mm. So, we're, we're on our next contract, like, at the beginning of March, like, March 3rd, I think, or 4th. And we're mm. not exactly sure where we're headed. So I don't think I could book it because you guys are going the beginning of March, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I could book it that soon. But if you guys were to wait for Legoland, I we will go and we will go to the bar. We'll get PBR and we'll go ride Daddy Pig trash. We'll Uber to Legoland. I mean, Florida, Florida is one of those places that we just seem to slip back to anyway, because it's like it's just so. Listen, trust convenient. me. You don't have to tell me twice. If yeah. we were to do it. 
also, if we were to do it, I could. We, I have somewhere we could all stay. We don't have to pay for hotels or nothing, bro. So, yeah, we'll make it happen. Sound like Ooh. the trip, man. We got to set this up later Ooh. in the year. I'm da- listen, I'm down. We'll go. Listen, we'll plan a whole day to marathon Guazi. See how many times in a day we can ride it. Oh, maybe we can beat my El Toro record. What was it? Fifty six. What's your El Toro? Fifty six. <laughs> Well, I would say maybe, depending on the ops. Quasi's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, ops aren't, you know, too quick. So last <laughs> thing, before we get on to the actual, the actual recap, is I cannot believe that station wait. Like, <laughs> it is the longest station wait ever. Ever. Yeah. I waited an hour in that station. Like, you, you're in a station and you think, oh, maybe 20 minutes tops. For any ride, you know, nope. like, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, like, the station is not even, like, basically you gotta look at the actual cattle bins of, like, <laughs> in the station. Yeah. Man. Otherwise, phenomenal ride, ops, the complete opposite. But, you guys are now about to be, just, honestly, there's, there's not gonna that. be much talking for us. There's some more news. Wait, what's news? I posted it in the bottom. Ooh, let me go up. Okay. Camp Cedars okay. no longer affiliated with Kings Island. I just, okay, side note, I just totaled out the California trip west. How much do you think it was? Like, price? Yeah, uh, like for everything. Uh, Good or bad? Oh shit! It was it was a thousand for everything. That's ah. yeah, that's save worthy. <laughs> that's not bad at all yeah. for like for like four I mean, five days, and I did Disney. It so was four days I or will something. say, me and my wife are quite over that, but that's only because we we didn't stay at the hotels. Like we didn't hotel hop, we got an Airbnb. Oh, I gotcha. We stayed in Carson, which was south of, like, it's in the center because we did Disney, we did Knots, we did yeah. Universal, and we did Magic Mountain. Yeah. So I think we were, we were well over, but we rented a car too, which I mean, yeah. the car alone was like I think eight hundred dollars for the eight days or something stupid like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I you you did really good shit. I, and I, I, I only I, really stayed with one person, Daniel. So I'm I'm really? not too upset. Thousand for yeah. everything isn't terrible. Not bad at all. I I am officially at after the stumble. I am officially at. I'm going to my my notes. A hundred and six. That is my credit count. Hundred and six. I hit my hundred on full throttle Congrats. on the ERT. Congratulations. Yeah. We, it was such a weird situation, and I think RC will relate to this. Yeah. So our hundred was supposed to be X2. Oh. But but when we got there, which I mean I can't really dog them because they still got X2 going for us, and they that was an incredible ride. I'm sure me and RC will nerd out on that in a second um but they switched the ERT days so we were supposed to have X2 on the second day which would have given me perfect time to get my hundred or me and my wife's hundred on the second day but because the ERT was early that morning and I wasn't not going to ride X2 during ERT uh it wasn't and so we said all right you know, I feel like we'll just make an RMC our our hundred. We'll just make Twisted Colossus, since they're gonna have that as our second day, you know, ride. And then, so Twisted that's what Colossus we decided. We're like, closed. yeah, Twisted Colossus was gonna be closed. We went into the tour, and he was like, he's like, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get Twisted Colossus up until next this next weekend. And I swear to God, every person that was on that tour almost had a unanimous sigh when he said that <laughs> everybody went oh like it was it, it was almost deafening in the room when he said that <laughs> uh, and then me and, 
Yeah, me and my wife were like, damn it, that was supposed to be our hundred. And like, we had just rode Wonder Woman. We would have made that our hundred if we would have known Twist Colossus was going to be down the next day. So then the next day comes, we all get there, full throttle ended up being our hundred, which isn't a bad 100, by the way. Full throttle, great. Best premiere I've been on. Right. It was an incredible, you know, I, I'm glad it was our, our, our hundred. But literally at the end of ERT, we're standing there. Where, where I'm actually walking from the Wonder Woman area. Me and my wife are walking up with Jake and a couple people, and we're walking up to go do Revolution. And we can see Twisted Colossus testing with people on it, with employees on it. Yeah. And I have never seen more people run to a ride than in that moment. Well, and the thing is, is uh, they did such an uh, that crew all day did such an excellent job. I think the do oh, yeah. rate was probably fifty percent. I was actually about to yeah, ask. Yeah, we didn't. No, I'm having some beats. We didn't myself. get a duel, but did you guys duel? Yes, I. So I had nine rides on it, which is a total of eighteen laps because it's two different yeah. tracks. It's a and Mobius I believe... track. I wrote it down. Let me check real quick. I had seven dual laps of the eight. Wow. And then one of them was a double duel where both of my sides of the cycle dueled each each time. Which is crazy because the times we wrote it, we didn't get one duel. Now, so we I were was, really was close on one of the duels, but we didn't get a duel on ours, which didn't take away from the ride itself, in my opinion. But... It would have been cool to be able to duel and have all the elements be, you know, together. Right. But yeah, that was that was our hundred uh, story. Was uh, it bounced many times, and then, I mean, I'm glad Full Throttle was our hundred. It still was great, but man, would I have killed to let X Tube in my hundred. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of like the situation where Super Duper Looper was about to be my 100, and that would have been so sad. <laughs> because Sky I'm Rush me. was having... Who has Velocity Coaster is my 100. Man, it's a... Mm. I would have loved to have Glossy as my 100. Loved it. And that is where part one of this special episode, nine, is coming to an end. Uh, this their Cali discussion is basically a whole episode alone and for our listeners sake I do not want to hold you guys to trying to listen to one whole entire cast so if you want to listen to the Cali trip and all of that recap go ahead and listen to part two of this but otherwise you can go ahead and catch Aaron from the Ride Factor who thank you from joining as a guest for this you can go ahead and catch him at the Riot Factor on YouTube and uh, I think Instagram and Twitter as well. Now, if you want to follow us on socials, we're at the High Rollers DMV on Instagram. And if you want to find the cast anywhere, we're basically on every one you can imagine for the most part, at least all the main streaming platforms at the High Rollers. And if you want to watch it on a YouTube form, you can. Just look up the High Rollers. Hopefully my YouTube will come up, but uh, my channel, West Tower. And in case you miss uh, the second part, I have two of my last summer vlogs uh, out from 2022. Where I had a really good time making them, and hopefully you guys have a great time watching them. Uh, hopefully to see you guys in the next cast, where it will probably be a little more normal. Until... We travel to Florida, which we are doing in the early uh, week of March, or second week of March, excuse me. So, homies, stay easy, stay cool out there, and stay safe. Peace out.